We're going to talk about how to sample various populations. And the population that we will begin with is a finite population. Let's start with some definitions. A finite population is a countable set of elements. This means that we have access to every element in the population. So the elements are probably going to be somewhat limited. For example, a finite population would include all colleges in the Missouri Valley Conference. There's a limited number of colleges, so they are countable. Another example of a finite population would be all of the houses in my neighborhood. We're able to distinguish which houses are included in my neighborhood versus those which are not. Or a larger finite population might be all of the various products that we sell in the automotive department of our store. The sampling method that we would use for sampling a finite population is random sampling. Another example of a finite population would be a statistics classroom. We can count every student in the class and they could all be part of our population. We want to sample from that population. How could we do so? Let me show you an example of how we might accomplish this. Imagine that you are an instructor for a statistics class. Because of a pandemic, half of your class meets on Tuesday and the other half meets on Thursday. To be fair, you want to randomly select half of the class who will come on Thursdays and the other half will attend on Tuesdays. Alternatively, you could use this same sampling technique if you wanted to divide all of the members of the class into, say, six groups, and you randomly select who is engaged in each group. The way that we are going to do this sampling is by using Microsoft Excel, the RAND function, and a list of students. Before we go on to that example, though, I want to take a quick digression and tell you more about the randomization function in Excel. Of course, Excel is not the only software we could use to create random numbers, but regardless of what software you use, chances are the math that is going on underneath that random number generator is called a Marsan twister. The Marsan Twister is a pseudo-random number generator, meaning that it looks random. It passes numerous tests for statistical randomness. However, the Marsan Twister also has the ability to set a seed. And that means that we can establish what is the starting value. The set of random numbers generated will therefore be the same for everyone using that same starting value. Therefore, if I was using this example in a classroom and I wanted you to get exactly the same random numbers as I got, we could start in the same place by setting a seed. The numbers would still pass the tests for randomness. However, they would be identical based upon the starting point. The Marsan Twister was not invented by, but was named after French polymath Marin Marsan. And its name derives from the fact that its period length is chosen to be a Marsan prime. We're not going to go into the mathematics of what exactly that means. The important thing to know is that we have a way of generating random numbers that we can use for random selection within a finite population. 